One of the things we get asked about a lot is some of the tricks that we found out in dealing with child tickets and parent tickets and the issues that can come up related to those. So first thing I want to show you is uh, in our service statuses, we have created a service status called child ticket. Uh, that child ticket status is marked as a we are waiting, do not escalate. Now the reason for that is when a ticket comes in and is made as a child ticket to a parent ticket, whatever service status that you leave it on is the, uh, is the service status that it stays. It does not take the SLA or the time to response, time to res plan, etc. of the parent ticket. So if you have a ticket that comes in is marked as new, let's say, and then is childed underneath another ticket, and uh, it stays there for a week or so while you're going back and forth with the customer, and then you close the parent ticket. When you close the ticket and it asks you and you say yes that you want to close the related child tickets, it is going to set your response time, res plan time, and resolution time to the current date and time from when it was uh, childed. So that can cause you a major issue in your SLAs. So uh, our procedure is that you simply, when you mark a ch ticket at, to be a child ticket, then you also put the service status to be a child ticket. So that's a great process, but how do we make sure it doesn't happen or that it happens that way? So we have a gadget which we call our orphan ticket gadget, and this is really a uh, a number, a list of tickets that are marked as child tickets that are not. So these are tickets that have been orphaned. So I went ahead and created an orphan ticket or a child ticket that uh, I left the service status as it was uh, wherever I'd finished up with the ticket. So when I double click on the orphan ticket, since I have one, it just takes takes me to that oldest ticket, in this case the only ticket, that is a child ticket, where the service status is not equal to a child ticket. So you can see that I left this ticket to be in progress. Now, of course, what that would mean in my case is uh, the res resolution time from the res plan time to resolution counter is still running and will continue running until the parent ticket is closed. So I can see that this was a child ticket, so our process is it would be that I would simply update that service status to now be a child ticket, save and close. And so that will go ahead and now update the service status uh, of that child ticket to be child ticket and therefore pausing the SLA so it doesn't cause me a problem. Now we'll go ahead and just do a manual refresh here so you'll see that we now have no orphan tickets. So one of the other things that is uh, related to child tickets is, of course, when you make a ticket uh, to be a child ticket, it removes the resources from the child and moves those, or based on the prompt, to the parent ticket. Now, that's a great thing because uh, you're no longer working with the child ticket. However, what about email responses uh, in particular, or maybe even portal responses, if you allow the child tickets to show up on your uh, service portal? So we had this situation where we had a client who had um, had an issue in their office and it had generated a whole bunch of tickets. So each person had a ticket uh, for whatever the issue was and we childed all those tickets into one primary ticket and the contact for that primary ticket was, um, was the main point of contact. So we're working back and forth with the point of contact and uh, working on resolving the issue. Uh, so all the rest of those tickets have been childed. Now, uh, of course, when those tickets were initially created, each one of those uh, members, each one of those contacts got an email that has our standard, you know, please re reply to this email if you have any questions or issues. Uh, and they don't get a email when uh, it's just marked as a child ticket. So uh, we found out uh, about 3 o'clock in the morning that the owner of the company, who happened to be in Pakistan at the time, uh, he had gotten the, the notification of the initial email and he had replied back shortly saying, nope, this is still a problem. And a couple hours later, he had replied back from his BlackBerry again stating that this was still a problem and this was not our normal service delivery uh, that was taking a while to risk get back with him. And about four hours later, once again, so he started to get very irate. And so we, I found this out when I got that call in the middle of the night. And so uh, the issue ends up being that when you have no resources and an email reply is sent to that ticket, those uh, replies don't go anywhere. So we created a gadget based on that to show us uh, any ticket that the customer was the last person to respond to. 
So this gives us a, uh, of course, now ConnectWise has the ability for you to uh, have a uh, workflow that's res re that's uh, related to the last update via the customer. But we also wanted to have this as a gadget. So I can immediately see any ticket where the last update to the ticket was the customer. So if I double click on my, in this case, I'm looking at our production boards, I can see here was a ticket. You can see this was last updated by the customer. So I can simply clear that flag save and close and that's going to go ahead and update that flag for this particular one. We now have 21 of those that are last updated by the customer. So we can see that as you know a drill down directly to that uh, to that oldest ticket or we can also have this going into a list that we can work with and then go click on those to uh, also clear those flags. So I hope this has been helpful for you uh, and given you maybe a little bit more insight on child tickets and the customer responded flag on tickets.